There is a common misconception about narrowband filters, whether you're using multi-band filters for color cameras or single band filters for monochrome cameras. Let's get into the meat of that. Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Recently, I made a video comparing the specifications on, of multiple multi-band narrowband filters. Um, and I got a few comments that were interesting and that were telling me that one of the filters that I, ra I had rated higher based on spec uh, than another would give worse uh, results on the DSLR camera because of the thermal noise. Because with the better filter that had tighter uh, band passes, people would need to expose longer. And if you're in summer with a DSLR, the thermal noise may, might increase faster than the accumulation of signal. And therefore, by exposing longer, you are basically worsening your signal to noise ratio, which means oh, you're getting a lot of artifacts from the camera with fixed pattern because instead of exposing longer, you increase the ISO. And therefore, the inferior filter with a broader bandpass will give better results. That's exactly the meat of the issue. This is an issue that is as old as narrowband filters. And uh, a lot of beginners that went from like 12 nanometer filters or seven nanometer filters down to three nanometers, for instance, like me, have not all, but many of them have uh, fallen victim to this common misconception. I sure did when I started. Uh, my first time with narrowband was with a DSLR camera with single band, uh, filters, which is really not a great combination, and also a DSLR monochrome camera. Uh, someone had like removed the Bayer matrix by scraping the sensor. You can imagine that surgery. <laughs> I can shiver just thinking about it. Um, and uh, that worked pretty well, but there was this thermal noise. Before I go into the details, a quick recap. Um, em emission nebulae, planetary nebulae, they emit light at this very, very specific wavelengths. So very, very specific colors. We can do something which is grab only those colors and reject everything else. When we grab only those colors and reject everything else, we'll, we, we get most of the signal that we need from the nebulae, but we tell light pollution to go away, which is great. Um, and the thing is though, we can't be like super extra precise and there are other considerations like bandpass shift, uh, which I went to uh, into that other video. And uh, like we'll have bandpasses, typically they'll be like between 18 nanometers to three nanometers. And there's wider, there's not tighter actually, I haven't heard of tighter, but it's typically like 18 to three. And uh, let's look for example, at uh, this image here. This is the uh, bandpass uh, diagram for a particular filter called the Nebula uh, Booster by IDAS. Um, we can see that there is uh, this red line here. This is H alpha. It's at a very specific wavelength of 656.3 nanometers, which is emitted by uh, most planetary and emission nebulae. And we have the filter bandpass that basically envelopes that uh, that light, that, that single line. Um, okay. So we can make this as narrow, that envelope as narrow as possible or as wide as possible within like manufacturing tolerances and budget. What happens when we narrow the bandpass? Let's say you were using 12 nanometer filters and now you're moving down to seven nanometer filters and you're thinking with seven nanometer filters, I will get less light for the same amount of time that I expose. Um, so my sub exposures will be less bright than with my 12 nanometer filter, which means let's remedy that. And so I can either increase the gain or the ISO to get the same brightness, or I can uh, increase the exposure time to get the same brightness. Good idea, but there are cases when you don't want to do that. Uh, let's look first at the ISO. Each camera has a read noise curve. The read noise decreases with the ISO and it has a dynamic range that also decreases with the ISO. So you increase the ISO, you get better read noise, but worse, um, but where's dynamic range? You're compressing the amount of data that you can really get within a single image. 
And there's usually very good compromises where uh, you have lowered the read noise enough. And if you were to increase the ISO again, you get very, 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 very small benefits of read noise. Uh, and you'd just be like sacrificing your uh, dynamic range for no reason whatsoever. Many cameras, it's like 800, 1600, or 3200, but it's basically a fixed value where it's kind of optimal. I mean, you can you can like choose mix and match. Like today, I want more dynamic range, so I'll go with less ISO, and I'll be aware that I'll have more read noise, or I can go higher uh, because uh, I'm fine with less dynamic range if I have slightly less read noise. But increasing the ISO because you're using narrower band passes is not the answer typically because in DSLRs also very often when you increase the ISO you'll get more pattern noise that is much more difficult to get rid of and if you're not doing anything like dithering it's just going to be horrible to try to get rid of. The second thing that people can do is increase the exposure time so this is usually translated as I when I move to narrower, narrower bandpass filters I have to increase my exposure time that is 100% incorrect. The correct sentence is, when I move to narrower bandpass filters, I will be able to increase the exposure time if it is better for me to do so. That is the correct sentence, and uh, the original sentence is the misconception. You do not have to increase the exposure time. It is optimal to do so if you can keep your thermal noise under control, which is very often in summer, not the case for DSLR cameras. And you actually see the exact same, same phenomenon if you're going from a very light polluted area to a very dark, pristine area. You will have the ability to increase your exposure time if it makes things better for you, but you do not have to, and that's the key. And the reason that you don't have to expose longer is because the amount of signal that you're getting from your nebula for a given period of time and given surface area of your sensor and focal ratio, etc., is exactly the same. It's exactly the same because you are capturing that one line in the wavelength that's present in both of the filters, the 12 nanometer one and the seven nanometer one, for instance. So the only thing that the seven nanometer filter does is capture less light pollution, which is net a good thing. So you're capturing less light pollution. The reason when you're capturing less light pollution that you would want to have longer exposures would technically be because you want to swamp the read noise, meaning you want to have the basically ex like the ideal exposure time with regards to the read noise of your camera sensor. But that's the ideal exposure time. You can actually be under that exposure time. It's not ideal, but if your DSLR thermal noise is going to completely murder you because you're exposing longer, it's much better than exposing, exposing longer and it's still better than um, exposing with the 12 nanometer, the wider bandpass filter, because you have less light pollution coming in for the same amount of signal. The useful signal, that H-alpha signal that we're looking at to the read noise ratio is still the same overall. It's just like that, that light pollution is changing. So you'll get a net better result if you do that, but you can do, you would potentially get a worse result if you've increased your ISO to unreasonable levels and you get like weird patterns on your camera sensor that are impossible to get rid of, or if you've decided to expose longer in order to swamp the read noise to have like the same brightness of each frame and the thermal noise is completely murdering you. So when people look at those very ultra narrow band kind of filters, the first thought is like, oh, but I'll have to expose longer and my mount can't handle that. Or my, I know my DSLR will just like explode in summer. Um, this kind of thought, this is not what you should be thinking. What you should be thinking is, do I have the budget for those narrower band passes? And will it be a problem with my optics with regards to the band pass shift? Those are the correct questions. And once you get the narrower band pass, you want to see what is the best compromise in terms of exposure time um, with 
your particular camera. If you have a cooled camera and a good tracking mount, just expose to swamp the read noise as usual. If you have a, a, a mount that's kind of reaching its limit with the exposure time that you had with the old filters, just keep the exposure time and don't sweat it. If you have a DSLR that you know had and you're in summer and the, the thermal noise is just horrible and you can see that you have more noise than before your signal ratio to noise ratio has been murdered because you exposed longer, well, you know, just expose the same length of time as you did with the older filter that was that was broader band, you will get better result than with the old filter that had a broader band pass because you have less light pollution that filtered through for the same integration time. It's really all a matter of optimizing that. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. This is a trap, a very common trap, a very common misconception. Um, and yeah, don't fall for it. So I hope this video was useful. I know we went into the weeds as always, uh, but I, again, I hope it was interesting and useful. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome to the channel. If that's the kind of content that you like, tips and tricks about astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, that bell icon, leave a comment, leave a like or dislike if you didn't like it or you don't disagree. Maybe there will be a flame war down in the comments. Please have a look at it. Mwah, burn. And uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.